here we have an object that's immersed in a liquid. Now the object could be sinking to the bottom of the container or it could be floating up to the top but at any rate we take a snapshot of the object at a particular instant in time. We are going to consider the forces on the object due to the liquid. These are contact forces and we know that for each point on the object the liquid exerts a force on the object at that point in a direction that's perpendicular to the object at that point. So all of these force vectors are perpendicular to the object at the points where the water makes contact with the object, surface of the object of course. Now obviously we are only showing a cross section of the object um, so we are only showing the force vectors in the plane of the cross section. This remember is a three-dimensional object. Um, anyway the cross section is good enough for our purposes. We're going to consider the sum of all the forces on the object due to the liquid. Let's consider the sum of the horizontal components. Well this object is supposed to have horizontal equilibrium so it's not moving right or left. So the sum of the horizontal components must be zero. Okay, so you can see some vectors here on the right have horizontal components pointing to the left and vectors on the left have horizontal components pointing to the right. But if you were to sum them all up, you get zero. Take them all, not just in this cross section, but in all cross sections, of course. Okay, so that's the case for the horizontal components. Now let's consider the vertical components. Now we have a different story here. Um, we know that the force at a point in a liquid increases linearly with depth. Okay, so that means that if we take two points in a liquid where one point is at twice the depth of the other point, then the force on this point here will be double the force on this point here, double in magnitude. Now we showed in a previous video, by the way, that the force at a point in a, in a liquid is the same in all directions. So these vectors have the same magnitude and I could indicate many more force vectors acting on that particular point in the liquid. And down here, all the force vectors um, can be shown, but they have twice the magnitude of the force vectors at this point. Okay, so in general what will happen is that the vertical components of the force vectors acting on the, the lower part of the object will point upwards and have greater magnitude than the vertical components of the force vectors acting on the top part of the object. Some of the force vectors, some of the vertical components of the force vectors acting on the top part of the object are pointing downwards, but they're small in magnitude. They're not going to cancel out these much larger upward vectors down here. So the upshot of all of this thing is that if we sum all the vertical components, we are going to get um, a vertical vector that's pointing upwards. And this vector is the resultant force on the object due to the surrounding liquid. Okay, this is pointing vertically up. Um, we'll call this vector B. It's called a buoyancy force. It buys up this object. Now, let's suppose that by magic this object vanishes and is instantly replaced with liquid of the same type as the surrounding liquid. Now I don't mean that the surrounding liquid flows in to replace this object. In that case the level of the liquid in the container would drop. That's not, that's not happening. The surrounding liquid never changes. So the, surround, the liquid surrounding this object remains exactly where it is, but um, the object just vanishes and is replaced by a liquid that's identical to the surrounding liquid. Now what about the force on this new object due to the surrounding liquid. Well, it's going to be exactly the same, exactly the same configuration of forces because this new object has the same shape and size as the old object. Furthermore, it's at the exact same position in the container. It's not at a lower or higher position. Um, if it was, then you know that would affect the forces on it. If it was at a higher position, the force due to the liquid on it would be less than what it is at at this position here, okay? So we have exactly the same configuration of forces on this new object. So we have exactly the same resultant force due to the surrounding liquid. 
Okay, the resultant force on this new object due to the surrounding liquid is exactly the same as this vector here. So it's B. Now, there is one crucial difference between this new object and the old object. This new object is in equilibrium. It's not going anywhere. Its acceleration is zero. So if its acceleration is zero, the resultant force on it, not just due to the surrounding liquid, but the overall resultant force on it is zero. Okay, now how do we get the resultant force? Well, we consider all the forces on it. Well, the force on it due to the surrounding liquid is B, that's vertically up. The other force acting on it is its weight. If we want to, we can write its weight in terms of the mass of this object. If the mass is m, then the weight is mg. Okay, the key point is that the acceleration is zero, so we can apply Newton's second law. If the acceleration is zero, the resultant force on this object is zero. So the sum of these two vectors is zero. In other words, the magnitude of the buoyancy force is equal to the magnitude of the weight of this object. B equals W. But W is none other than the weight of the liquid displaced by this object. So if we know the weight of the liquid displaced by the first object, this one here, we have the magnitude of the buoyancy force on this object. By the way, we are dealing with forces here, and we discussed pressure in previous videos. Well, pressure is not a vector. So, um, you know, do not try to represent the pressure on an object by vectors. Pressure has no direction. Pressure is relate related to um, the force vectors in a liquid. You know, if we double the depth, we double the pressure at a point in a liquid, just like we double the force at a point in a liquid. Um, you can see that the pressure on the lower part of this object is greater than the pressure at points higher up. So the object is bite up by that pressure difference.